uh, we have basically two kinds of photovoltaic systems. Um, one is working more, more as a grid connected uh, inverters. And they provide anti landing operation. So this means that if the grid is out, automatically if I have this outage, I have an anti landing algorithm that will stop the production. And as you can imagine, this produces a lot of complaints. Yeah, you can imagine you you install your PV panels here. Now I have an outage. It's it's noon. The sun is shining. The grid goes down, and I have to stop my production. This is maybe not reasonable. At the same time, you can find in the market I landed inverters but they are not compatible with the grid because they they fix voltage and frequency so and and they of course need to to work with batteries um so that's why we need something in the middle yeah and, and right now we already have these technologies available so yeah you can you, you can see also for instance this is just one slide from sma in that case in red uh, you can see these components are working like uh, current sources, so injecting all the power that they can when av available. And then the yellow one is just one inverter that tries to fix voltage and frequency, and it's supported by, by batteries. It's very interesting also to see here that we have also possibility of shedding uh, loads in both AC and DC. So this is also integrated in this, this uh, commercial product. And and we have also the possibility of adding more, let's say, generation in the DC side. So that's why I was saying that that we have plenty of components right now that allow us to build microgrids. And that's all I think something awesome. Another interesting thing is how is the configuration of a microgrid? We have a number of converters. Not all of them are converters connected, but we have some power converters uh, as interface between energy storage systems or generators, even some loads. Some other loads are just connected there and they can be shipped. And then we have the central uh, control system. So this acts, let's say, as a, as a SCADA system. And now you can see why also is important the communications. Yeah. So, so you just take care about how is the power quality inside your microgrid? How is the power quality in the grid? And then you decide if you connect or not. And you do this by coordinating all these elements. Yeah. So this is just one slide from ABB in which they also believe that you could have a distribution systems on the level of low voltage and then connected to medium voltage with a microgrids. I will say that also when we think about microgrids and going more to medium voltage, we have to also consider not only electricity, but also thermal. And this is something that many times are misleading. This is one example in Japan in which you could have two substations connecting your electric system. This is very interesting because you don't have only one PCC, but two. And then we have to control, let's say, the power flow. In this case, as we talk about Japan, it's it's very dominated by by gas. So uh, gas micro turbines are are also connecting here. And um, this other concept was developed uh, by the University of Wisconsin, and it's about uh, that uh, one important thing on microgrids. It's it's not generation. It's not only generation, which is kind of solved but how we make the load management. And I will say that this is very important because not always you can control the generation, but you can have some control over the loads. So you can have some loads that are sensitive and those are mandatory to supply, but then you could ha have also some loads that can be adjustable and some other loads that can be sheddable. For instance, you could have a freezer and you could connect or disconnect. And if you are inside some limits of temperature, the freezer will still work. And I saw this application in some islanded microgrid systems. Yeah, and, and I will say it's amazing because you are using your freezer 
as a thermal store a storage system. That is something very nice. Uh, some examples that you can see, for instance, uh, this is Jeju Island in Korea. It's an amazing place. I don't know if some of you have been there, but I will say that it's not only nice because of they have small hydro wind turbines and also solar uh, PV integrated in the in the system, but also they are explaining all these technologies to any kind of tourists. So everyone that come to this island to make tourism, they will explain to you how a photovoltaic system works, what is a power electronics converter, how they store the electricity, etc. So this, they explain this to everyone, elder people, uh, kids, and this is something very important because uh, you know all these technologies if they are just inside one lab and don't go to the society it's it's really something that we know that it it don't ha it doesn't have any future and uh, coming back to japan uh, i think that they built also amazing uh, microgrids for instance in that case in hachinohe they built an uh, digestion gas holder with a lot of bacteria and all these bacteria you know when they, they produce gas and once they produce gas you can use this gas uh, for your engines and then with your engines you produce electricity which also you at the same time produce heat and this heat goes back to the digest your chamber so you produce more gas you see so there's a feedback let's say in the thermal part and this is very important yeah I, i'm saying this because Normally, uh, microgrid seems a very interesting topic for electrical engineers, but I will say that we need the thermal power. Otherwise, a lot of times we are losing a lot, a lot of efficiency. Yeah. So you can see here the system that they built. Uh, another interesting microgrid, it, it was in Sentai in Japan. This microgrid has been built, I will say, 15 years ago. And it have basically solar uh, PV, fuel cell also, and some uh, gas gensets. Yeah, as, as I said, very important uh, thing in Japan is, of course, the, the gas. Yeah. And you can see here also a little bit about how the electricity is produced. So you have basically one part which is DC and another part which is AC. So 